Oh, perfect. Hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning in for the webinar. My name is Jacob Pritchard. I'm with Fordham Wealth, and this is brought to you by Port Jackson Securities as well. Here with me today, I've got Ian Ferreira, CFO of Rent.com, and also Greg Bader, uh, CEO of Rent.com. Both of you, thanks for, thanks for coming along. Thanks for coming as well. How are you guys today? Uh, good, thanks, Jacob, and thanks for everybody for joining in. Do we have a, a view of how many people we've got listening in? Yeah, of course. So we've had a registration just above about 60, um, and currently we have, let's have a look what we've got here. Uh, we've got about 16 or so that have just tuned in straight away. So we'll have, uh, we'll definitely have more people come in um, as time goes on, and there'll also be a recording of this as well uh, from here. So we've got a max of 500 people, but um, yeah, we're happy for, for the presentation to start. Everything's gonna be recorded from here. If you wanted to take away with the, the new product that you guys have got. Perfect, okay, well thanks very much for that. But I, I thought we'd start with, um, we'll zoom through this in 10 minutes and we do have, um, yep. this pack will be up in the ASX and we also have our full launch pack uh, of rent pay, but maybe a little bit of a backstory. Um, Sure. We, we exist to, to change renting. We, we believe renting is too hard in this country and our mission, if you like, is to make it a little bit easier, a little bit uh, less confront, uh, confrontational, um, a little bit better for everybody. So, you know, the big stats are that 32% of our of people rent in this country and it's increasingly being dominated by younger people. The renting really has two phases, I guess, and uh, has the search phase where we've traditionally played with rent.com.au. People spend on average four to six weeks looking for a property. It's a pretty hectic time. And then on average, 30 month in a tenancy. So RentPay, our new product, allows us to engage and play with our customers throughout their tenancy phase. We've done pretty well, we think, in our, in our rent.com.au business. We've uh, you know, certainly grown to be one of the top portals in the country, certainly the largest uh, one that's dedicated to renters. Extremely proud of our app performance. Most of our customers consume our product via a mobile phone. So having the um, top rated real estate apps in the country is, is pretty important to us. And, and those stats you can see on the screen there, that's in the background of about 85,000 properties rented each month in Australia. Um, as Greg mentioned, we've got two, uh, two phases of the tenancy. Our original purpose was to help renters through the search phase. Um, that business uh, has been, we've, we've turned that around by focusing on the consumer. Uh, you can see there we've, we've posted three quarters of profitability in a row now. That, that was our initial goal beyond listing was, was to get that business profitable uh, and we, we've got there now. Uh, so we've got, I guess, a good audience, a profitable business from which we can uh, build. And so we're extending into the tenancy period. Um, it has cost us uh, some investment in terms of doing that, but we, we're not apologetic about that at all because the, the size of the opportunity is massive. Uh, and it also circles back to once people move through their tenancy with RentPay, they will then are more likely to come back and use rent.com.au for their next uh, next property search. Uh, and so there's a self-reinforcing loop that uh, that circles back to that. So we would expect profitable growth from both RentPay and rent.com.au. Perfect, perfect. So on to uh, RentPay. So we spend a lot of time working with our customers. We've had over, oof, over 1,500, 2,000 people involved in surveys, um, in our office, um, web workshops, etc. cetera. And, and we, we think we've got a pretty good idea of what the challenges are with the existing systems. Interesting for us is that it opens up a market that is just 20 times greater. At any point in time, there's only 5% of the renting market actually looking for a property. So the other 95% are, sitting there happy uh, happy with their life. And our current suite of products under rent.com.au don't really apply to them. Our products are all built around helping people into that house. So rent pay is working, will work for us to address the other 95% of the market. So it gives us total coverage. Uh, pretty excited about it. Definitely. I guess the key points, we've just gone live literally last uh, Thursday, uh, huge audience out there. 
we, we believe we've earned the right to go further with, to extend into the tenancy period. Every metric we have from um, our, our customers indicate that they support us. Uh, we provide a lot of value to them in the search phase and we're confident we can take that through into the tenancy phase. Uh, at its heart, it's a, it's a wallet, a digital wallet. We, we partner with ANZ Bank on this. The, it does a couple of, couple of what well, sounds simple, but they're actually quite complex. What we're doing is giving the renter full flexibility on their side of the relationship. They can choose to pay uh, differently in both time and amount. And then on the agent side, we're giving consistency um, and certainty to the agents through, through their experience. So we, we, we've created this model here where uh, it really benefits both sides of the equation. And more importantly for us, there are opportunities here to support renters. I mean, Score Builder product, which um, we'll cover shortly, is a first in market. It's, it's never been done before. And this, this is all about recognising a, a renter, their, their regular payments, and then helping them build financial future through, through increasing their credit score as we go forward. So there's a lot of parts to this that are brand new in the market. For sure. Value proposition is, is quite simple. Uh, we want to take the complexity, give all the flexibility people want, let them get on with their life. Yeah. In terms of marketing, going forward, so we've just launched the product. Uh, we'll, we've been quite clear to market on our plans going forward, but to, but to summarise, we, we own and manage Australia's largest renter channel. So we don't need to go out and spend a fortune. We've got a, a huge customer base uh, to to work with. I mean, we're at 1.1 million renter resumes on our database at the moment. So that, that'll be our focus. Given the age demographic of our customer, you'll also see us through social media, community, stronger in the advocacy, etc. And they, these will be where our customers are and this will be the areas we're focusing on. That said, we, we have the capacity and the budget to look at a larger scale campaign um, later in the year uh, when, when the time's right. The the opportunity on rent pay, I, I guess, is massive. Well, we've spoken about it before, it's in some of our ASX releases. We've set ourselves a target of 200,000 users, about 10% of the market over 24 months, with a target ARPU of 10 bucks. So you do the maths on that, depending on what multiple you want to apply, we're looking at a you know, three to four hundred million dollar business. We we think that's yeah, just well. there are so many opportunities to extend rent pay. Having that customer relationship on a permanent basis opens up uh, banking, finance, utilities, and they're all uh, some of those are partners that are existing to us, and some of those are new partners we're in conversation with now. The rest of the pack, which as mentioned, we'll put on the ASX, really covers off the features in more detail and. You can see how it increases our, our customers' well-being, gives them uh, confidence, surety. We've got funding solutions in there that if your car blows up on a Tuesday, your rent's due on a Friday, we'll lend you the money. Uh, very much a buy now, pay later flavour in terms of repayments. Um, very simple to understand. And um, yeah, we're excited about the product. It's brand new in market. We're literally mm -hmm. just turning on some of the marketing today, so you wouldn't have seen it yet. <laughs> We've had about... Um, Oh, yeah. About about 50 customers download the app already. We've already paid our first rent through the through the app. Um, so oh, so wow. all indications are it's starting off well. But look, I might pause there instead of me rattling on and just maybe yep. take a few questions. Yeah, sure. I'll do a little bit of a recap about that um, and talk about some interesting points. And we've got a few questions here that we'll go through as well. Um, yeah, like last 12 months for you guys has clearly been extremely exciting and you guys have positioned yourself really well as well. Um, like what I can see from you guys as a business, um, you guys are really extremely customer focused. Obviously, you guys see a massive demand um, for the moment in terms of what you're providing for a product, which is great, obviously, from a shareholder perspective as well especially because there's obviously money to be made with what you guys are doing. Um, I think going first with the digital wallet that you were talking about before and actually giving some power back to not just obviously uh, people that are obviously leasing out their property, but also people that are 
looking to rent the space or the or the or the house for that matter, um, something as simple as allowing a tenant to choose a day which their their rent is due, or um, you know, and still allowing for the the actual owner of that property to still receive the rent on the same day, while the tenant can choose what day that they get on. You know, that's a I think that's a huge amount of flexibility that's been provided to um, that customer base, and yeah, clearly people are, are taking it up really well. I think. Moving forward to that as well, um, in the last 12 months that you've seen, uh, there's probably been a, a you, you would probably know better than me, but a, a huge spike in rental demand as well, what we've seen over the last 12 months. So um, you guys have positioned really well there. So um, yeah, from a shareholder perspective, I know we've been happy, our clients have been happy. So um, great work there over the last 12 months and things look really good for the next 12 months as well. So we're pretty excited for that. now. Moving on to, to some questions here. Um, first one that I've got here from a client, I've got one from Solomon. Now, talking about 2020 being a huge wake up call for many businesses, domestic wide, and some would say obviously the most difficult year of the last decade. Um, now, I mentioned before that rent.com's obviously in the rental space. There's probably been a bit of spike at demand in that space as well, which you guys have taken advantage of. Um, would you just would you describe the last 12 months as being sort of a blessing in disguise? Or how would you find that? Look, on, a, on, an, on an annualized basis, it's, it's probably similar to, to previous. Mm -hmm. what, what has changed and what we have noticed is that the, the general cyclic nature of, of renting, you know, a, a boom January, a bit of a second spike around July, very quiet November, December, mm -hmm. that's probably changed and what's affected that has been various uh, lockdown measures, inability to move, etc. So overall demand is strong, uh, but what we have noticed very much is that the different cycle. It, it's interesting to point out in, in April this year, there was 17,000 less properties available to rent than April the previous year. We're seeing a lot of states running sub 1% vacancy rates, Western Australia, Queensland, especially at the moment, Sydney's pretty tight. Ironically, the only the only state to have more properties available in this April was Victoria, um, wow. and our well, our view there was that we, there was a probably there was a net domestic migration as COVID came through with people I guess moving further up north, and we're also seeing the uh, international student population not returning, so that's um, that's had an impact there. So look, overall, we've had um, our strongest quarter over the last 12 months was different to our previous quarters. Once again, reflecting a slight change in the cycle. This year, we've seen Jan, Feb, March um, in a record quarter for us, but the, the, the pattern was a little flatter than normal, um, spread over. So it'll be interesting to see what the rest of the year um, looks like in terms of cycles. Uh, Fingers crossed we, we were at the back end of this. I mean, it's easy to say, um, and we should mm. see some normality return. And, and just a point on that that cyclical nature that we normally see in the search phase, um, as Greg pointed out, like we, we, we see sort of swings between quarters of, of about 20% in terms of customer numbers. But that's an advantage that we have with RentPay coming through where that's a, a week in, week out, month in, month out product. Uh, and so it, it should uh, insulate the rent business from from some of that cyclical nature because it's an annuity revenue stream that we will earn from that. For sure, for sure. No, it puts it good for the next 12 months. This actually ties in pretty well with the next question here, uh, which is just from Eden. Now, first part is pretty similar to the first question, but I guess the question that Eden's asking as well, um, I guess what over the last 12 months are you, do you guys feel most accomplished about um, as a business wise? Um, I think there was some huge changes across the board on the ASX. What's something that really stood out for you guys that you, you guys feel pretty chuffed about? The big one for me um, has been our staff. We're, we're yeah. now at full strength, which takes us to 25 people. So for, and that's with a couple of recent hires. So we've been hovering between 20 and 25 people. The, the effort that the staff have put in has been fantastic. Now, being Western Australian based, I'd, I'd like to think we're probably a little bit used to working with remote teams uh, anyway, given that WA is not exactly you know, a mecca for prop tech or fintech. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's just the effort we've put in. Now we've, we've had 
COVID implications just like everybody else. We've worked from home when we've needed to, back in the office when, when we could. Um, we're all back in the office now and, and people have been really keen to get back in the office. And I think that's a symptom of a small business anyway, where a lot of our ideation and a lot of our working is on an informal basis. We're not, we're not big enough to have teams and silos. We kind of all in this together. So I, I guess just the performance of our staff. I mean, we've been working pretty hard and long hours to get rate pay out the door. It was a um, fantastic product idea. And, and, you know, I'll be honest, we probably underestimated the effort and the complexity in the actual build. I mean, we built everything ourselves. Um, so we have our own development team, et cetera. And, you know, we partner where, where we need to, and that's with people like ANZ Bank, Navadi, Vergo Finance. So being able to maintain all those relationships, roll out some product, at the same time have record um, profitability on our core business, so we're not taking our eye off the ball there, is being pretty cool. I think I think we've achieved, you know, I'll be honest, I think we've achieved a hell of a lot for someone our size. For sure, for sure. Especially in the last, um, and, and you know, it's some of the benefits of that we've seen over the last eight months just in the share price has been has been incredible too. So p clearly people are pricing in some big moves for you guys, which looks really good. Um, I think a really in interesting point as well for for rent.com, um, you've got a, a lot of, I would say, titans in the, in the real estate game at the moment. Um, something that I think is quite impressive about you guys, you guys have also positioned yourself, um, obviously that I touched on before, very customer focused, which is obviously really showing some benefits for you guys longer term. But more to that, as well also going into the fintech space which uh, i wouldn't say isn't exactly diversifying you some people see that as not the way to go with business um you know that's 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 uh, relative to someone's opinion but you guys are, are, are sort of um trying to propel yourself in front of uh, some of the other larger names from what we can see and and i think from this question here that i can see from abigail um she also asked, um, which you touched on before, I think you guys want to get the business somewhere up to about the $400 million market cap in the future. Um, do, do you see definitely rent pay being a, a strong driver for that? Yeah, good, good question. So we do have two large companies sitting above us, um, the red one and the green one. Um, and look, both fantastic companies and they're both multi-billion dollar companies. So that's, there's, no, there's no criticism at all. What's different about those guys though is that a, a, 90 odd percent of their revenue comes from real estate agents. They're built for real estate agents. They serve a purpose. They're focused on um, for sale. If you look at their annual reports and count how many times the word rents mentioned, that, that that's what their businesses are. And there's nothing wrong with that. I guess we're a little differently. We don't we don't charge agents to list on our property, and and we unashamedly face the consumer. So. When we're talking to a customer, the the scale advantage of those big guys tends to disappear. And, and at worst case, I think we're on an equal footing. At best case, I think we do things a little better. I mean, we operate, we have <laughs> Australia's yeah. largest lifestyle database at our disposal. So every time you look at a suburb, we tell you the percentage of single people, married people, is it a party club suburb or is it a parks and gardens suburb? And they're, they're the sort of information that people want to make a make an informed decision. So that's that's our focus. Um, look, that said, rent pay we do see as our wealth vehicle. We um, we've already we've already got phase two, phase three in planning and new features and functionality. Certainly offering more services to the real estate agents. But even today with rent pay, you know we're the first in market to launch with NPP, which is the new payments platform. And something that sounds so simple, where when a renter looks in their wallet and you know five hundred dollars goes out at three o'clock, the agent has that money in their account. So there's no more of this two to three days waiting around, not knowing. So I think the real estate agent, the real estate industry in Australia in general is probably a bit of a laggard from a technology perspective. It's it's a symptom of the fact that it's previously been dominated by a couple of large portals. And then we've got 8,000 agents out there that are all at various stages of technology adoption. So it's a very fragmented industry. I think technology, we, I like to think we apply technology not for its sake, but specifically to solve, per, to solve problems for customers. So we've got customers that want to be able to enter their data once, apply and inquire on multiple properties. That's rent a resume, 1.1 million users of that product. With renting now, we wanted to remove complexity for the agents. Agents are 
you know, they're running a small business and they're no different to you and I. <clears throat> they, they want efficiency. So when they've got 100 renters all wanting to use different payment options and timings and whatnot, it, it is actually quite complex for them to manage. So we've taken all that away. And at the same time, full flexibility to the customer. And there's a lot of little interesting things in this group. You know, we had over 40% of our customers asking they wanted to pay more than their rent each month or each week. And the reason for that is because we have this casualization of the workforce, part-time employment. So if someone wanted to take a holiday in three months time, they're not gonna be earning. So building that buffer, if you like, so that they've got the capacity there to cover shortfalls, they're just, they're all things that we think, well, we know are, are, are valuable things to consumers. So we have a whole package of those sort of options within RentPay. And we don't expect every, every renter to need or want every service but it's a package of service in one place, it's secure, it's easy. Um, so yeah, we're, we're really bullish on it. We think, you know, heart on hearts, we're, we're doing the right thing. We get out of bed every day to make renters' lives more easier. And I think we've accomplished that with rent pay. And I see this becoming the default way you manage your rent because it offers value on both sides of the equation. For sure, for sure. No, and um, I think the benefits are going to come through quite quickly for this as well, which look really good. Um, next question that I've got here. Actually, no, I was going to put a point on that I was thinking about as well. Um, from your point of view as well, I feel that you're quite passionate about this space and everything like that, which is good to see for shareholders as well. Um, where, where did this all first come come about for you, I guess, in that? Um, like, was there an experience that really drove the, the passion in the industry of, of rents that you guys are in at the moment to really um, provide better customer service? Was there an, an experience where, let's say, you were looking for a place to place to stay for, for a couple months, you were moving between jobs or something like that. Was there some sort of experience that sort of drived um, all these products that you guys are doing for renters? I, I think there's a number of reasons and, and I think Jan and I both com comment on this. One of them is we, we're a small office so our customer service team are in the middle of all of us. So we hear every call and mm -hmm. the, the, the level of stress and angst that some people go through in the renting process is is really quite distressing. So, you know, that's the catalyst I, uh, for, for wanting to change. I think the the big one for me though is more is broader than just our business. It's it's society. So, 30 years ago, you know, we were told to um, get into a mortgage and be in the outer suburbs and do without everything and and pay it down and build your wealth through property. The current generation, I just think, are, are so much different to us. They, they, they've never been, you know, we've got a generation coming through now that have never been better educated, more mobile, more savvy. They're, they're financially literate. They're, they don't see property ownership as necessarily the only wealth vehicle. They're, they're, they're in equities trading. I mean, they're even in crypto, which, you know, God forbid. Um, so <laughs> so they're, doing a, they're doing a lot of different things. But I think also something else that's changed is they have a better life balance. So they they put more weight on their lifestyle and we see that through our rent vesters. So we've got 20% of our customers are what we call rent vesters where they're either saving for or own a property but not where they want to live. So they might jump into the market in a, in a regional town or an outer suburb at a, at a price point that they can afford or they can afford without compromising any of the flexibility and then they'll go and rent where their lifestyle dictates. And remember too, I mean, jobs for life, that's gone out the window. People chase, you know, people spend, you know, from 20 something to 30 something chasing and building their careers, moving to Sydney, moving to Melbourne. They're, they're just normal things now. They're not, they're not a big deal that it once was. So the big change for me and the big driver for me is to remove this stigma that somehow renting is a secondary or a poor choice when the, the, the sure. statistics show us that the vast majority of people are renting because it's the practical and logical thing to do at this life stage for them. So, so that's the big change, I think. And, you know, where Australia is famous for its property market and not necessarily in a good way. Um, we, we need change in our market. We see that over 90% of all the rental stock in Australia is owned by mums and dads you know, probably just on one or two investment properties. And that, that in itself is a fine thing, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's gone well beyond a house over, uh, you know, roof over your head to now a speculative investment. But 
the, the issue there that where, it, where it has an impact on renters is lease security. We often see people's circumstances change um, and the owners might need to move back in. So therefore the person renting doesn't have that security of tenure. Um, and they're, they're, they're things that have been addressed in other markets. And I, I do notice our federal government has made some changes. So we've, we're starting to see some of the uh, purpose-built rental accommodation starting to enter the market. It'll take a number of years before the mix is more balanced. But yeah, the, the big one for me is just the world's moved on. And for many people, renting right now just makes absolute bloody sense. And it shouldn't be hard. <laughs> That's for sure. That's for sure. I think um, something that's pretty pretty good to look at as well from you guys is just because uh, you mentioned as well, Australia is known for its property market, and I think you mentioned the Red and Green Company, for example, which you know, no no disrespect to them, great businesses, what they do. Um, but just because something is working efficiently doesn't mean that there isn't room for improvement. And I think that's where you guys are really um, assessing this situation at the moment in this. In this uh, in this field and in this space, and and seeing that you know we can make improvements here. Um, yes, it may take a little bit of time to do that, but it is going to benefit us in the long run. So um, yeah, it looks like a really bright future, obviously for Rent.com, that's for sure. So um, I hope that obviously it continues from there. Now, next question here, I've got one from a client, no, uh, also a shareholder as well, Caleb. Now, in the next twelve months, um, what are you guys most excited for? business-wise? Anything in particular? Yeah, look, the big one for us is, is getting rent pay uh, into the market. Yep. I think once people understand the this, this ability for your rent to start working for you and to start benefiting you uh, over the longer term, I think that's really powerful. Um, you know, we're in discussions with, with some banks at the moment, um, with some utilities. There's you know, we've got over, you know, over over fifty percent of our customers are asking to pay their utility bill in the same time as they pay their rent because they just want simplicity. Now, we know from a modelling point of view that simply moving um, electricity bills from that quarter of consumption plus thirty days to pay and moving that into a, a fortnightly or weekly cycle, I mean, a ten percent market share that's a fifty million dollar cash flow improvement to the utility industry. So not only is there a benefit to the utility, it's a service customers are asking for. So some of this stuff is no brainer. Um, and, and you know, rent, renting, moving into home ownership is an interesting one as well. We're, we're moving into a world of open banking at the moment. And, you know, it's gonna take a couple of years for that to fully flow through. But, but what that does is it makes uh, data become quite ubiquitous. So, our renting history and, and, and our customers through rent pay start to become quite an interesting and valuable, um, I, I guess, commodity. But we're, we're not going to put that out on a market and sell that and all that sort of stuff. We'll use that data to work with the banking industry to actually transition a renter into home ownership. And you know, we have a lot of little goals that we tick off that we, you know, we've won because of A. And, and one of them is is you rent through rent pay for two, three, five years. When you go to get a mortgage, I want that mortgage to be better value for you because of the fact that you've been using rent pay. Um, and you know, we've built your profile, we've built your credibility, we've, we've helped you get into that position in life. So, you know, it's, I know it's easy to say, but I, I believe we've demonstrated that through our core business, rent.com.au. You, you can actually do good and, and have a profitable business at the same time. And you know, we, we see, as I said earlier, we see rent pay as the way to go. The other two big companies, red and green, you know, big cash cow businesses, their desire to disrupt is minimal as, as it would be if we were running the show there. We start with nothing. So everything we've got, we've earned. And the way, the, the way we earn that is by talking with our customers and offering value back to them. It's, it's the only way forward. I think it's very well said, very well said as well. And I think, yeah, your point, you made a point about the red and green businesses. Um, yeah, if being in that situation, they might not want to spend too much time on the disruptions side of things. But you guys have obviously pointed out some things that need to be fixed and you guys are working on to fix in this space as well. And 
could very well be one of the major major companies in the future that does disrupt this space. Um, you know, who knows? Obviously, what happens in the in the next five years if you guys um, continue just in the rental space, or you guys even branch out further. Um, that'll obviously be be interesting to see as well. Now, I've got one last question here from Raylan. Um, you've touched on a little bit about this. What what do you think? What do you think sets uh, rent.com.au so far apart from, from some of the other larger names, other than, I guess, like your customer focus is, is major? I think, obviously, a point there. Oof, that's a, it's a good question. I, I look, we, we just talk to our customers and we listen to our customers. We focus on a part of the segment that is, it's just not heard and it's not listened to. The, you know, in, in, if you talk to anybody in property in Australia, the, the you know the three million dollar house in Sydney is the rock star right the, the the renting doesn't really get a look in but we've got a huge market segment here thirty percent of our population are renting they don't really have a champion they don't really have a voice and the system that how we rent in Australia could do with improvement um, you know I look at I look at Airbnb I look at Netflix I look at Uber all companies that have changed the world they're all companies that didn't invent a segment, they took an existing um, segment and improved it. They improved it because of what their customers demanded, uh, simplicity, consistency, those things don't exist uh, in Australia. We have the same audience. Um, it's gonna take time. Um, you know, we, we don't wanna hurt real estate agents. We see them as key partners of ours. They've, they've got a tough enough job as it is. So a lot of the <laughs> solutions together are very much focused on that dual sided marketplace and I think there's ample opportunity about value both sides um, so yeah, I, I no, think just a different mindset and you know when you're a little guy you've got to stand for something and you know we stand to try and make the renting experience better perfect no very well said very well said with that um, well I'm just going to have a look through here as well and see if we have any questions coming in um, I will say to the audience as well um, I will be posting uh, my mobile and email there if you do have any questions that you'd like me to pass on to Greg or even Yan as well feel free to email me it'll be j.pritchard at fordhamwealth.com.au I'll make sure to send out a link to everyone um, are you guys would you guys be happy if if any questions were sent in afterwards if I pass them on to you as well uh, yes, sure. Uh, we can also be reached at investors at rent.com.au at any time. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Well, was there anything else you guys wanted to add? I'm pretty excited for rent.com.au moving forward. You guys are really well customer customer focus which is great um, standing up for the little guy in a sense as well which looks really good you guys have got some great revenue streams that you guys are looking at positioning yourselves for to take advantage and obviously let's see where the market takes us for the next 12 months um, we look forward to checking in as well but um, thank you for a great 12 months on rent.com uh, from myself and and from many shareholders so thanks for that thanks very much no thanks very much Cheers. Not a problem. All right, guys. Well, thanks very much, Greg. And thanks to, thanks as well, Yen, for tuning in today. Um, if you guys have any more questions, feel free to reach out. My name is Jacob Pritchard. This was brought to you by Port Jackson Securities from Ford and Wealth. Thank you again, rent.com. Greg and Yen, we'll speak soon. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Catch up.